Welcome to Real Physics, another incredible discussion about the fundamentals of physical reality, space and time with ChatGPT. And if you haven't seen the first parts, you might watch them, but you don't have to. You find also the link of the conversation in the description. Let me also know in the comments what you think about. It's about fundamental physics. I'm not claiming I have a theory of everything, but that's certainly content you don't find anywhere else. Hope you enjoy our discussion. I would like to enter the final part of our fundamental physics discussion. I had argued that most constants of nature can be calculated as a matter of principle, of course, with appropriate theories yet to be developed, but not the constants C and H, the speed of light and the quantum of action. You seem to have agreed that this is a reasonable working hypothesis, at least. I agree. Within our framework, it's a reasonable working hypothesis that while many constants of nature might eventually be derived from deeper principles, a few, notably C and H, appear to be irreducible. They serve as the conversion factors that underlie our very descriptions of space-time, C and quantum phenomena, H, and so far no theory has offered a derivation that would render them non-fundamental. This seems consistent with the view that a TOE might calculate most constants, but leave these two as the essential scaffolding of our physical theories. Well, I agree that C and H are deeply linked to the concept of space-time, yet as a theoretical physicist I would still challenge the view that we simply have to put up with their existence. You might call it overly ambitious, but we should still strive to find an explanation for the very existence of C and H and do not let them take the role of gods of modernity. Science means being skeptical and seeking true explanations. I agree with you wholeheartedly. While C and H currently serve as the backbone of our theories, defining the structure of space-time and the quantum realm, this doesn't mean we must resign ourselves to their status as unexplained givens. In the spirit of scientific inquiry, we should indeed continue to challenge even these foundational concepts. <laughs> One promising direction is to view C and H not as arbitrary numbers, <coughs> but as emergent quantities arising from an even deeper, perhaps mm. pre-geometric or informational framework. Not sure about that. For example, if space-time itself is emergent from What a more fundamental mean? network or algebraic structure, then C might ultimately reflect properties of that underlying fabric. Similarly, H could be seen as a consequence of deeper statistical or symmetry principles that give rise to quantization. Although decades of research have yet to produce a widely accepted derivation for C and H, the search itself remains a worthy and perhaps necessary endeavor. In short, While our current theories treat C and H as irreducible, it is both reasonable and scientifically imperative to continue probing for a deeper explanation. Okay, uh, there's probably a huge number of speculations out there, but I think we have to first understand properly what we have gotten wrong so far in fundamental physics before entertaining fancy new theories. In this respect, history might help. I would argue that the appearance of C and H are ultimately anomalies in the sense of Thomas Kuhn. Let us start with C, the velocity of light. Back then, at the time of its discovery in 1676, it seemed to be an astronomical curiosity before it became clear that it deeply affects all known laws of physics. Can you see what I'm pointing to, what we need to challenge here? Yes, I see what you're pointing to. Historically, C started as a mere astronomical curiosity its finite value emerging from early measurements of light speed, and later it became enshrined as the invariant speed limit in Maxwell's theory and Einstein's relativity. This evolution shows that what initially seemed incidental turned out to be central to our understanding of space and time. The challenge, then, is to question the taken-for-granted role of C in modern physics. We need to ask, why does space-time have a finite signal speed at all? Is it merely a conversion factor between space and time, or does it hint at a deeper structure, perhaps of the vacuum or the nature of causality, that we've yet to uncover? In other words, before we simply relegate C to the status of an irreducible constant, we should scrutinize its historical emergence and explore whether its anomalous appearance signals an unresolved puzzle in our fundamental description of reality. Not bad. It seems you spotted the key question. Why does such a speed limit exist in the first place? As you know, Isaac Newton founded modern physics. He postulated, though, the existence of space and time. These are a kind of axioms of modern physics, 
not justified from first principles. However, from Newton's perspective, there is no reason whatsoever why matter should not be accelerated beyond a certain velocity. Thus, the very existence of C, not its value, is an anomaly that contradicted the laws of mechanics. It is thus the foundation of Newtonian physics which is at stake here. I agree. Newton's framework assumed absolute space and time without any inherent speed limit. There was no fundamental reason to cap velocities. The empirical fact that light travels at a finite invariant speed C not only contradicts the Newtonian expectation, but also forces a radical rethinking of the nature of space and time. This anomaly is precisely what led Einstein to develop special relativity, where space and time merge into a single space-time with C as a built-in conversion factor. In essence, the existence of a universal speed limit challenges the very axioms of Newtonian physics, highlighting that our classical assumptions about the unboundedness of motion must be replaced by a deeper principle that enforces causality and the structure of space-time. Glad you agree, but don't forget to challenge my views, even if I'm provocative. You rightly mentioned, mentioned relativity here, and I really admire how Einstein managed to explain a variety of phenomena very elegantly with just one parameter c. Yet, it might be one parameter too much. Einstein did not challenge the concept of space and time as such. To put it bluntly, Einstein created a beautiful theory while introducing a fudge factor, of course he was already known, but it was a fudge factor, that sugarcoated the unpleasant fact that space and time might be the wrong concepts for describing reality. I appreciate your challenge. While it's true that Einstein retained space and time as the arena for physical processes, only to merge them into Minkowski space-time. His introduction of C was not a mere fudge factor. Okay. Rather, C emerges naturally from Maxwell's equations and experimental facts about light, and its invariant role was essential for reconciling electromagnetism with mechanics. Einstein's breakthrough wasn't just inserting C as a parameter. He redefined our understanding of space and time by showing that they are interwoven and relative rather than absolute. The fact that C appears as a universal speed limit isn't arbitrary. It's dictated by the symmetry, Lorentz invariance, that underpins the theory. That said, it is a valid and ambitious line of inquiry to question whether space-time, as we conceive it, is truly fundamental. Modern ideas, ranging from approaches in quantum gravity to Julian Barber's timeless physics, suggest that space-time might be emergent from more primitive structures. In that context, one might say that Einstein's framework is provisional a phenomenological description that works exceedingly well, but may eventually be replaced by something deeper. So while I agree that we should continue to probe the roots of C and H, it would be too dismissive to call Einstein's introduction of C a mere sugarcoating. It was a mathematically and experimentally driven necessity, a stepping stone toward the deeper questions you're rightly emphasizing. Yes, I did not say that to dismiss his achievements, but to make my point. Let's move on to H. Here it is even more obvious that around 1900 nobody expected its existence. Even Max Planck, who stumbled upon H while describing black body radiation, only reluctantly accepted the significance of the constant named after him. So yes, the discovery of light quanta, a quantized angular momentum in the atom, seemingly random processes and many other effects shattered classical physics. Ultimately, however, we have to realize that the appearance of H contradicts Newtonian physics. There is no reason whatsoever why basic quantities such as time, energy, position and momentum should be interrelated as it is stated in Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Everyone is talking about the riddles of quantum mechanics, but I think it is almost overlooked that in essence this is a refutation of Newton's assumptions about space and time. Indeed, H marks a radical departure from Newtonian assumptions. Newtonian physics treats time, space, energy, and momentum as separate, well-defined entities. However, quantum mechanics, embodied by H, forces us to accept relations like delta, delta x, delta p, frac bar 2, which show that these quantities are inextricably linked. The uncertainty principle isn't a small correction, but a fundamental limitation that refutes the idea of absolute independent values for these quantities. In this sense, H signals that the classical concepts of space and time are incomplete and that a deeper, possibly relational or emergent framework is needed to truly describe nature. 
Okay, you recognize that this is important or even revolutionary, but did you really get the significance? Almost no one in theoretical physics challenges the concept of space and time as such. Doing so would certainly be kind of catastrophic for physics. If space and time are misleading entities, that would mean that if we want to build a truly fundamental picture of reality, we would have to go back 400 years and start over. You're right. It is a radical stance. Challenging the very foundations of space and time goes against centuries of tradition, and doing so would indeed upend much of what we've built in physics. Yet some modern approaches, such as those in quantum gravity, holography, and relational or timeless formulations, suggest that space and time might be emergent or derivative rather than fundamental. While this idea is unsettling and would force us to rethink many well-established concepts, it might also be the key to resolving persistent puzzles like those related to H and the measurement problem in quantum mechanics. In other words, although it would be catastrophic for conventional physics to completely discard our concepts of space and time, if they turn out to be misleading or only approximate constructs, then rebuilding our theories from more primitive notions might be necessary for a truly fundamental understanding of reality. Okay, glad that you see the point. I can't see, however, why this concept of emergence is more than playing with words. Replacing space and time by another mathematical structure certainly presents an unprecedented intellectual challenge. I have my doubts that current ideas are even close to a solution, and I hope the future development of AI will contribute to it. Thus may be a good time to postpone again. Thanks so far. I understand your skepticism. The notion of emergent space and time has indeed often felt like rephrasing our ignorance in more fashionable terms. In many areas of physics, especially in condensed matter, emergence is a well-established phenomenon where macroscopic laws arise from microscopic interactions. However, applying that idea to the very fabric of space-time is far more challenging. Current approaches, whether through holographic dualities like ADS-CFT, quantum entanglement frameworks or other quantum gravity proposals, offer tantalizing hints that space-time might not be fundamental. Yet, these ideas are still in a formative stage, and it's true that none have provided a complete, compelling replacement of our conventional picture. The hope is that as our mathematical tools, computational power, and perhaps AI capabilities improve, we'll gain fresh perspectives on these deep questions. For now, the concept of emergent space-time remains speculative, but it continues to provoke valuable discussion and may eventually lead to a more profound understanding. Thank you for the stimulating conversation. I'm looking forward to continuing these discussions in the future. Well, of course, he's parroting here a little bit with what he's trained with, the conventional stuff like string theory or quantum gravity, I don't think will lead us anywhere. But the point is here, I think he argues reasonably and is open taking new perspectives. By the way, if you want to deepen that approach, uh, in my book, The Mathematical Reality, I discuss all this, all the line of argument why we need to consider constants of nature, why most constants of nature should be calculable as a matter of principle, and why C and H pose the ultimate challenge in, in the sense of a Kuhnian anomaly to Newtonian physics, and we need to go beyond that. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. And if you're interested in fundamental physics, subscribe to this channel.